When Bob Finley asked me if I would uh, give the toast to the lassies, I was a bit taken aback actually because although I've uh, attended uh, quite a few barn suppers in my time, I've never been asked to do this. <laughs> so uh, although I agreed to do it, I had no real idea what I was agreeing to. <laughs> so what one does when one doesn't know these days is you go on the web. <laughs> so I went on and checked uh, just exactly what am I supposed to be doing. Well, apparently, apparently the object of this toast is to de deliver a speech about the importance of women in our lives, drawing reference to Burns, the women in his life, his attitude and views on women, and concluding with a complimentary um, and positive note. <laughs> the challenge is to deliver a balanced, witty, and sincere toast well, no pressure there. <laughs> so, Burns' first love was a, a young lady called Nellie Kilpatrick. And she was 14. She was, a, she was the daughter of a, a local blacksmith. And Burns was 15. And uh, his first poem was to, to Nell. And, and it reads like this. Oh, once I loved a bonnie lass, I and I love her still. And whilst that virtue warms my breast, I'll love my handsome Nell. Now Burns wrote later about this rhyme, I never had the least thought or inclination of turning poet until I got once heartily in love, and then rhyme and song were in a manner the spontaneous language of my heart. I remember I composed it in a wild enthusiasm of passion. <laughs> and to this hour, I never recall it but my heart melts and my blood sallies at the remembrance. <laughs> so, were it not for the lassies in his life, Burns might never have been inspired to produce such a written legacy as he did. In writing this toast to the lassies, I couldn't help but notice the difference between the lads and the lassies. Now, not, not the obvious differences that, uh, that are so pleasing to the eye, but uh, more subtle differences. Such as, a successful man is one who makes more money than his wife can spend. A successful woman is one who can find such a man. <laughs> Men believe that they have the last word in an argument. But actually, women have the last word. Anything after that is the start of a new argument. <laughs> A man has five items in the bathroom. A toothbrush, shaving cream, razor, a bar of soap, and a towel, probably from the Holiday Inn. <laughs> the average number of items in a typical women's bathroom is 337, <laughs> and a man can't identify any of them. And finally, children. A woman knows all about her children. She knows about dentist appointments, she knows about best friends and favorite foods and secret fears and hopes and dreams. A man is vaguely aware of little folk running around the house. <laughs> but women are definitely caregivers, don't you think? I'm reminded about a story about old Sandy who was lying on his deathbed and his wife Margaret was kneeling by his side, tenderly holding his hand. Can I get anything for you, Sandy, she said. No answer. So she tried again. Have you no last wish, Sandy? A faint reply came from the bed. A wee bit of that boiled ham would be nice. <laughs> wish, man, you know I bought that for the funeral. <laughs> Have you noticed that all the TV sitcoms, they all seem to have a father or a husband who is totally incompetent, <laughs> and the wife who is absolutely, who absolutely rules the roost, okay? One of my wife's favorite programs from Scotland is a program called The Last of the Summer Wine, and it has at least seven men in it 
who are totally terrified of the women in, in, the, in the stories. And of course, it makes for hilarious uh, TV, you know. But it brings to mind a story of Willie and Jean. And Jean was going to have a dinner party. And she's getting everything prepared. And she suddenly discovered, darn, I forgot the snails. So she sends Willie out <coughs> to the, the local uh, gourmet store uh, with a bucket to get the snails. So off he goes. And he gets the snails. And this, as Willie is leaving the, the store, he runs into a bunch of his pals. And they're all on the way over to Charlie, Charlie's bachelor apartment to watch the big game on Charlie's new 60-inch TV. So Willie thinks, well, I could go and look just to see the new TV. So off he goes with the pals to watch the, the new TV. And while he's there, of course, he has a beer, only one. But one leads to two, and two leads to three. And before, before Willie knows where he is, he's lying on the sofa, blind drunk, uh, and sound asleep. After the game, Charlie decides to leave Willie to sleep it off. And he goes off to bed. So next morning, Willie wakens up, realizes where he is, and thinks, oh, it's the party, my snails. So he jumps up, grabs his snails from the sink where he put them, dashes home, runs up the apartment stairs, and just as he's getting to the door of his apartment, he trips, falls flat, bucket goes everywhere, and snails are all over the place, and he's on his knees, and the door opens. Where have you been? Quick as a wink, he looks up at his wife, looks back at the snails, waves them and says, come on, lads, we're nearly there. <laughs> the, the great Robert Burns' relationship with women is a confusing one. Despite being incredibly promiscuous, it was not purely a physical uh, pleasure. Burns appeared to genuinely have adored women, and in his works he mentions by name a number of women, and his declaration of love are still some of the most famous ever written in English. But it was for Clarinda, or Mrs. McElhose, that he wrote the song much admired to this day that glorifies the power of love and tells us that grieving is the price to be paid for love. And in his poem and song, If, uh, if One Kiss, he, he writes, a fond kiss, and then we sever. A farewell, alas, forever. Deep in heart-wrung tears I pledge thee. Warring sighs and groans I wage thee. So he was a romantic and loving and, and not afraid to say so. And perhaps he has a lesson for us men here tonight. Perhaps before you get home tonight, gentlemen, at least find your loved one and tell her that you love her. Robert Burns argued consistently that women were the intellectual and social equal of men. But are they? I often think he was doing them an injustice, that they are in fact our intellectual and social superiors. Look at the relationship between men and dolphins. Dolphins are a bit like women, actually. Extremely intelligent, fun to be with, sleek, and can really move. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible how dolphins, in only a few weeks, can train men to stand at the side of the pool and throw them fish. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think we can safely conclude that the lassies today are just as difficult to understand uh, to, for men as they ever were for Burns. And I'm happy to say every bit is lovely. Gentlemen, please will you rise and join me in a toast to the lassies. To the lassies. To the lassies. To the lassies. To the lassies.